Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 20th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Washington, D.C. The famous Pwn to Own contest at Can Sec happened again this weekend and among the exploits being demonstrated, one is sort of off note for how it combines various exploits together and how it accomplishes a compromise of a MacBook Pro's touch bar via the Safari browser. So this could be exploited by a malicious website. In order to accomplish this, three different vulnerabilities were actually used. The first one was your more standard Safari browser vulnerability affecting the just-in-time compiler. The just-in-time compiler is used to optimize JavaScript. We have seen a number of vulnerabilities in these just-in-time compilers in various browsers before. Now, Safari is sandboxed on OS X, so the second vulnerability then actually allows privilege escalation and breaking out of the sandbox. And finally, a vulnerability that allows the attacker to overwrite kernel memory is used to then compromise the touch bar. Aside from its novelty, compromising the touch bar is in so far significant in that the touch bar uses its own little processor and is actually in itself separated from the remainder of the system. As for past pwn to own contests, there are no details about these vulnerabilities available yet. However, manufacturers have been notified and typically you will see patches coming out pretty quickly. And it wasn't just Safari that was exploited as part of the contest. In addition to Safari, Firefox and Microsoft Edge on Windows were compromised as well. Now, the Pwn to Own contest is part of CanSec West, a conference that does attract some of the more advanced topics. And one interesting talk that was presented at this conference was about detecting reverse engineering. Now, a lot of uh, these techniques typically rely on the analyst actually running the software. And then the software will do some DNS lookups or call out to a server to notify the owner of the software that it is being reverse engineered or run in a debugger. It's trigger to actually detect if software is being statically analyzed. So in this case, an analyst would just look at the code itself without running the software. Now, Colin Moliner came up with an interesting technique to actually even detect a static analysis. I haven't seen his slides yet from CanSec West, so in the show notes, I'll link to an older talk that he presented. But the idea is pretty awesome obvious and it just relies on analysts actually using Google. So what he's doing is that he is including some very specific library names or other strings in his code that will attempt an analyst to actually search these strings on Google. And the technique relies on a particular page that the author of the software set up being the only hit. And I have to try myself how well this works. Uh, recently, Google did sort of modify some of its algorithms somewhat to prevent showing these single hit pages just uh, because of these possible privacy issues that arise from them. But regardless, Regardless, you always have to be on top with your OPSEC if you're analyzing malicious code and things like Google searches could certainly be detected by a sophisticated attacker. And sticking with Google here for another story, Black Hat search engine optimization appears to be back in manipulating search results. Now, in the past, what we have usually seen is that uh, these kind of firms did place links to a site on thousands of vulnerable bulletin boards and the like in order to trick Google into assigning a particular link a high rank for specific keywords. Now, 
Google has become quite good in reducing this type of advertisement. What apparently is done now is to abuse Google's autocomplete. You may have noticed that when you are typing a keyword into Google, that Google suggests a list of possible completions that you may be looking for. And the way it comes up with this list is by essentially analyzing past queries for this particular keyword. Well, the bad guys figured this out and have now apparently trained large botnets to enter searches into Google and with that to bias this selection. This technique is discussed in a paper by researchers from Indiana University as well as the Georgia Institute of Technology. And they're actually also proposing a technique to discover these malicious autocompletions. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.